gosh, it's been um, two weeks tomorrow since I've done a Facebook Live. Um, so I've missed you all here on Stamp in Peace with Mary Nave. Um, I had a nice vacation um, with um, Andrea and John. I wish Emily could have gone, but she just started her new job. Um, but Andrea and John and um, my sister Joan and her husband and two daughters and their two boyfriends. And we um, had a beach vacation in Hilton Head. Very nice, very good time, um, perfect weather. Um, got a little exercise in with riding bikes and um, just had a really good time together. Lots of relaxing. Um, I did take some work to do. And um, honestly, for one thing, the internet was really slow there. Um, but also, I just couldn't get into it. I just couldn't get into it. And I thought, you know, life is short. I work really hard and um, I need to treat myself to some downtime. So um, really didn't hear from me too much over the last two weeks, but I'm back in my Stampin' Peace studio and have lots going on in here. Um, and I'm happy to be back with a Facebook Live today. Um, and yesterday I was dealing with tech issues and my printer went out and I needed it for this um, blogging class I'm working on and some other training things and but I got that set up and so today was a little bit more of a normal work day for me. Um, a couple of things I would like to share with you. Celebration is going on still. This is the second month. It ends August 31st and um, today Stampin' Up! Um, added a few products that you can get free with a qualifying order during celebration and these are products from um, I believe they were all from the annual catalog if I remember correctly but you can see them um, I sent it out in a newsletter today. If you're not a newsletter subscriber, go to stampinpeace.com and there you can subscribe to my newsletter and or blog. Um, but that news went out today and you can also go to my online store, marynave.stampinup.net and click um, celebration and you'll be able to see all the new products that have been added. Please note that these products and any of the other previous ones are available while supplies last only. Um, at this point, well, you know that the um, note cards and envelopes um, were depleted. The inventory was depleted very quickly. So those are gone. Um, the tree lot dies inventory is also depleted and we will not be getting any more of those. Some of, um, the DSP, the Wonderful World, I think it's called the floral one. Wonderful World and the Rings of Love DSP were out, but when I checked this afternoon, they were back in the online store as free items that you can get. Um, so, but please be aware, if there's something you just have to have from Celebration, get it while you can, because all of those products are while well supplies last only. Tomorrow, you want to take a look at the kits collection because there is a fabulous kit coming out tomorrow. And I did put this in my newsletter today also. Um, and there is a link to my newsletter here on Stamp and Pete in a post, Stamp and Peace with Mary Nave, as well as the VIP group. Um, but it, it's a fab, I, I don't even want to tell you. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to tell you. It is a fabulous kit, so I cannot wait to order mine tomorrow. And and then I want to show you a bit of my latest class to go. This one, you can look for this. I have a meeting at seven. It'll be later this evening or tomorrow when I send out the information on this class to go. Okay, this is a gift box and it uses the um, Rustic Harvest Suite. And let me just pull this out. Here's one of the cards. 
Here's another. Um, and part of this class includes, or a part of the class, is the set of craft note cards and envelopes. There are 20 of those note cards, pre-scored, 20 envelopes, and then this wonderful gift box. So my class includes everything you need to make 20 cards, two each of 10 designs, plus decorate the box. Now, in here, I have 10 of the cards and envelopes. It is fabulous, okay? It's fabulous. Um, all of them fit in here very nicely. You can see the box closes completely. So here's a couple ideas for this class. You can make up all 20 of the cards to each of 10 designs. You can put 10 in here and give them away as a gift in, with the box or, and keep the other 10 for yourself to use or package up the other 10 in a different way. Maybe a cello bag with a ribbon and give that and you've given two gifts or use the box yourself to store your cards and envelopes once you've made them. So lots of options. It's a fabulous class. Look for information late tonight or tomorrow. Um, I want to give a shout out to a couple people. This is from Sharon Shreve. She's on my team and um, won some um, prizes for the creative showcases that she participated in on our team uh, Facebook group. And she is always so thoughtful. No matter what I send her, big or small, I always get a thank you note from Sharon. I, I have a feeling her mom was much like mine in that uh, you had to send thank you notes. Um, and this came from another team member, Marion Henrik. And it uses one of our newest Halloween suites from the July to December mini catalog. Um, our team got together a few weeks ago for um, just an informal potluck. And um, some of us chose to swap cards. Um, Marion didn't quite make the deadline to do the swap, um, but I had made an extra for her um, and gave it to her that night. Of course, not expecting anything. And then this came in the mail. She made a swap just because for me. So I appreciate that so much. Um, I love getting happy mail. I love getting cards and notes from people out there in my stamp and Peace world. Um, it just always brightens my day. So, um, okay, I want to check something out. Okay, I thought there was another question. And lastly, I want to show you one more thing. I said I was on vacation in Hilton Head last week. One thing that we did this year was um, broke into groups, typically couples, there were four couples, um, and then myself. So I was with team Allison and Ryan, my niece and her boyfriend. And for four nights in a row, one of the groups prepared dinner. And ours was an Asian meal, poke bowl. We had um, fruit kebabs, trying to think what else we did. But before we left, Allison said, can you make place cards? Because it started out, we're gonna have a contest. All the meals were so fabulous. We all won, to be quite honest. Um, John and Andrea did um, uh, pasta. Oh, I can't think of it now. They did a farfalla and then a, I can't think of it. You put peas and different things in. I'll think of it later, um, but that was fabulous. Um, Jonah Gaylord did surf and turf, um, got to have crab legs and steak. Oh, I haven't had crab legs in forever, and that's one of my favorite things. And then Allison and Josh did Mexican night, so it was really lots of fun. So anyways, Allison and Ryan and I had the first um, night of the dinner, and Allison said, would you make some place cards? So I used, and you're looking at this backwards, I didn't flip, um, and made a personalized place card for everybody. And that was a lot of fun. And then so we were kind of, you know, saying, hey, we set the bar really high, whatever. 
the table wasn't even cleared and people were swiping these. <laughs> so they would pass them from one team to the next night after night and I just brought them home. So um, the next time we go on a trip and do something like that, I'll have to come up with a new little something. But it was fun. I took a few supplies and made up those nine place cards and uh, it was fun to take my stampin' on the road. Um, and everybody loved the place cards, so big hit. All right, who's ready for a project? Today I'm going to be showing a technique and this is called the no line watercolor technique. Um, and I'm going to show you how really easy it is to do watercoloring using our water painters and ink and clear blocks and um, some watercolor paper. So I'm gonna flip my camera around now and we'll get started right away. If you would please share this live video and invite others to join us, I would appreciate it so much. My featured stamp set is Full of Love. I'm using the smallest, the uh, water painter that has the smallest tip. The water painters come, I always wanna say aqua painters because our old version, that's what they were called. But they're a set of three. You saw me use this recently to do some watercolor wash, that wide one, a, a medium sized tip. And today I'm using the small one. And the reason I'm using the small one is because my images are small. All right, so if my images were larger, maybe a large open flower, I might use the medium size. Um, and then of course, the big one as a watercolor uh, wash for the background. Now I'm starting with, let me see here, here it is. I'm starting with a piece of watercolor paper. These are five by seven and I just cut it in half. So it's three and a half by five. And I will cut it down or die cut it um, for the card I'm making, I think. I might not, actually I might not. I might do something different this time. But I am going to um, start with gray granite ink. And let me move this just a little bit more. Like I said, there's a lot of detail in this, so I want you to be able to see it well. Okay. Um, and you'll need a piece of scrap paper. And I'll be using the same piece of scrap paper repeatedly for various reasons. But the first thing I'm going to do is take a stamp from the Full of Love stamp set I ink it up. I'm going to stamp off and then I'm going to stamp on to this piece of watercolor paper. It's not as straight as I wanted. Let me try again because I had a different thought of how of the card I was going to make this time. Oh that's better. So as you can see I can still see the image, but it's very light, especially in comparison to stamping at full strength. But that's what I want. I want this to be very light. When you do um, no line watercoloring, watercolor technique, the idea is that you want to make this appear as if you did um, true watercoloring with no lines at all in there, okay? But we get kind of tricky with Stampin' Up and we can do those kinds of things. Um, there's nothing wrong with stamping the image as we usually do and coloring it in, whether it be with um, the water painters and ink or your Stampin' Blends, markers, um, pencil, whatever, okay? Please remember that all of the products you see me using are Stampin' Up! products, and they are current Stampin' Up! products, okay? 
the watercolor paper and the aqua painters come in, are in the, um, what do I want to say? They are in the annual catalog. All right, so now I have a selection of ink pads here. And I'm just going to start filling in. Now, to use these inks, I'm going to simply tap a clear block onto the ink pad and I'm going to pick up some ink. And once I've done that, I can set my ink pad to the side out of the way. And I'm going to start, and I'm really not squeezing this. I may add some, you know, squeeze a drop of water to um, get a lighter shade later if I want. And I'm just going to let those dry, okay? One thing about the watercoloring is if you can let them dry in between steps or work around areas that need, um, need some more time to dry, that's going to be the best thing. So this is the only place um, I'm putting yellow right now. I'll come back to it and fill in that flower. Um, next, I'm going to use Fresh Freesia. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. Put some ink on a clear block. Just gonna pick it up. And I'm really only using the tip. And I don't have to press hard. I don't have to press hard picking up the ink from the clear block. And I don't have to press hard at all applying the ink to the watercolor paper. So the nice thing about this is I can see those light images, those light lines to help me fill in the spaces. But those lines kind of disappear with all the ink I'm adding. So that's why we call it no line watercoloring. You know, I can do the same over here. You're just gonna get a look, different look, okay? I guess you'd say this is more of maybe a, a true, um, the end result would be more like if a true watercolor artist um, painted these. Although this is so simple. And trust me, I am not an artist by any means. But using this technique and using the water painters always makes me feel like an artist. Now, I can go back in here. These are kind of just one tone, right? I can go back in here if I want. I'm probably going to, should probably let those dry though. But I can bring more ink onto those if I want to add some darker accents. And I haven't forgotten about filling in that yellow. Now I'm using, what is this, Calypso Coral. And with this Calypso Coral, I'm going to just gonna outline these three large flowers. And I'm really just going over the stamped lines, but they disappear. When I go over them. You don't have to worry about maybe going out of the line a little bit. No pressure that way. We want our stamping and paper crafting to be as stress-free as we can make it. And just not having to worry about getting in the lines exactly. 
or figuring out the correct shape of the flower. No, we can do that just by going over these stamped off images. And I used gray granite. I'm not sure if I said that at the beginning, but I inked up my stamp with gray granite. I stamped off on scrap paper and then onto my watercolor paper. When you're doing no line watercoloring, choose one of our lightest colors ever. Um, so gray granite's a good one. Smoky slate, um, Sahara sand, uh, maybe even the soft sea foam or petal pink. Um, make it a color that will go with your finished product, the colors you're using, but you're going to stamp off to get it that real light feature. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in and fill in my yellow flower. I'm just gonna put a drop of water there just by squeezing, gently squeezing the water painter. So when you dilute the ink a little bit, you're just gonna get a lighter color, a lighter shade. And this is Daffodil Delight. I feel like every time I use Daffodil Delight, it just kind of, I don't know, makes me smile. It's a cheerful, bright, cheerful color. My favorite yellow. And remember, I put in, um, I painted on those um, Daffodil accents to begin with, with full strength, okay? And then, oh, Doris, thank you for posting that. You are such a great helper. Doris is on my team. And um, she was quick to find the watercolor paper and the watercolor painters in the annual catalog. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, so now I wanna yet let that yellow flower dry. I think my uh, Flirty Flamingo color here, I think I said Calypso Coral before, but it is Flirty Flamingo. I think that could use a little dry time yet. And I'm gonna go back in with my Fresh Freesia and just dab on a little more color, just to put some more shading in there. Real simple. And I'm gonna hold this up close for you. Okay, notice these are not perfect shape and that's okay. If you look at a watercolor um, artist's picture or artwork, they um, watercolor tends to run together and doesn't always have very distinct shapes. So keep that in mind when you're doing this technique. This is one of the reasons why I love it. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to color in the lines. Um, well, we do color in the lines, but we don't worry about going outside of the lines, that sort of thing. Um, so I think that takes off a lot of pressure and makes this technique a lot more fun. So now I'm going to work on those leaves and I'm using Garden Green. And you can see here, just by um, continuing to paint without adding more of the ink, you're gonna get um, various shades of the greens in there, various shades of the garden green. I'm gonna go around that yellow flower that yellow flower is still probably drying a bit. 
so I don't want to get, oops, that wasn't supposed to be colored in there, but that'll be all right. Um, you just don't want to have too much water on your brush and get close to that. And if they do bleed into each other a little bit, that's okay. And I'll show you an example of that. I think I have that on one of my practice ones. When I'm going around another shape, I go pretty close, but not necessarily always touching right away. And I can always add more ink later or do a touch up later. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, Mary has such a steady hand. If you really look, it's not that steady. <laughs> I do shake a little bit. Um, but the key to this is just touching the tip of the uh, water painter, just the tip of the brush, okay? So that is going to be the biggest factor. So you just touch the tip of the brush and then you kind of drag it. And if you haven't done um, no line watercoloring, you might even want to start with maybe a larger image, say like a larger animal, like um, we have the bear and the kangaroo in the, oh, I can't think of what it's called. Um, you might do a, the, a rose from Cottage, the Cottage Rose set. Um, so you might even want to practice with some of the larger images. But trust me, it's not as hard as you think it is. And I know some of you are like, oh, Mary, but yours is so good and whatever. No, I practice just like you. And you can see I made a, a boo-boo right there. Um, got a little too much water and brushed a little too much right there, but I'm not gonna worry about it because I think it still looks good. Um, this leaf up here is really light. I'm just gonna add a little more. A little more color. And there I am just wanna pick up some of that water. Okay. And now I'm going to carefully drag some of this um, garden green ink for stems. And so I'm barely touching, okay? And you can see some are a little wider and some a little narrower. That's based on how much um, pressure I'm putting on the brush when I'm doing it. So Marilyn, the difference between line and no line water coloring is, let me flip this over. When you are doing just basic line water coloring, you're gonna stamp the image just as you normally would. And then there are many ways that you could color this, right? You can fill it in with watercolor pencils, your markers, Stampin' Blends, but we can also watercolor. Um, so for example, I might just fill in right here with green. And the lines of the image, the stamped image, are still very prominent. I can add some yellow to this flower. Okay, but now for no line water coloring, you're going to ink up your stamp. You're going to stamp off onto scrap paper first and then stamp and you've got a much lighter image. Can you even see that? A much lighter image. So that when you're water coloring, and you know, it's a little, I guess 
you could think of it as if you're doing no line watercoloring, you're starting with a very, very light stamped off image. And then as you add or fill in the color, those lines are actually disappearing, okay? And let's, you can probably see what I mean here. When I did this one, you can still see the lines. When I do no line water coloring and I start filling in the color of the image, that real light line there just kind of blends in with everything. So it's, it's just a matter of preference. Um, if you like something more bold like this, or if you want a softer look and not see the line so heavy. Okay, so that's how I would describe the difference. Um, oh, I have to do one more thing. Fill in these large flowers with some flirty flamingo ink. I put just a drop of water. I squeezed it from my water painter onto the clear block. I'm just going to fill these in. And the last thing I need to do, let me move these out of the way. The last thing I need to do is fill in the center of that yellow flower. Marilyn, I'm glad that's much, uh, much clearer for you. I'm glad you asked. And I'm just going to, I have some ink in here in the lid, so I'm just going to use that instead of <clears throat> putting ink on a clear block because this is all I'm doing is that dot in the center. All right. And I'm really just going to let this dry now. Okay. If you want to speed up the drying process, you can always add um, heat to it using our heat tool. You just want to be careful that, like here, there's a little puddle of that. You can't really see it. It's like a drop of the ink on there from the water painter, okay? You just want to be careful if you have something that's puddled yet or really deep. You don't want to bring in that heat tool so close that it spreads that ink out, okay? Not for this technique, all right? But using the heat tool is a good way to um, speed up the drying time, I'll say, all right? Um, and then I'm trying to think how I want to finish off this card because I have a sample to show you, but I want to do this one differently. And this is three and a half by five. Um, and I think I'm going to cut it down a little bit. So I have to think about this. I want it proportional to my card size. So four and three quarters would be three and a half. Four and a half would be, would then be three and a quarter. You might want to um, measure out your paper first to start with, or you might get to this part and decide you want to die cut it. Die cut that image and use the die cut image to make the card. Let me go just a wee bit smaller here. And do stick around because I will be giving away the finished card. And I have a couple um, other sa samples to show you of my no line water coloring. Now for this, I'm simply going to um, stamp right here. And actually, no, I'm gonna do a piece of paper across. I think I'll like that better. And how about sending love your way? Now I could stamp it directly on there, but I think I'm gonna run a banner across there instead. So how about I'm going to use the
Flirty Flamingo as my card base. And I think I'll do the banner in Daffodil Delight. So let's see, that is three and a quarter, four. So I'm gonna do about four inches. And I'll cut this to, this looks like a half inch would do. And I'm going to punch the ends. Oh, how about if I use, use this one the label me lovely punch I want to see how that's gonna look oh yeah I think I like that yes I think that will work out as long as I can <laughs> stamp straight so we shall see, We're, I'm gonna practice here. And you know, I think I will stamp in, I don't know what color to stamp in. How about, I'm gonna stamp in the soft suede for this. I'm gonna practice on my scrap paper first, kind of looking at the bottom edge of that scrap paper. I'm not quite brushed a little too heavy too. This is something I very typically do, especially with the rubber stamps. Oh, that looks pretty good. Um, I like to scrap stamp on scrap paper and I'm kind of looking at where the words are lining up in comparison to the bottom edge of the scrap paper. Try not to press too hard and not straight on that one. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Okay, second one is better. Second one is better, except I smudged it a little bit. You know what? Look what I have here. <laughs> I have an extra piece. So why not just try again, Mary? The Stamparatus is another um, great tool that you can use to help you stamp sentiment straight. And that one is my best one, I'd say. So now I'm ready to punch those ends. I'm gonna try not to touch the ink yet because I don't wanna smudge. Awesome. Okay. So now I'm gonna put all this together. I feel like I need one more layer behind um, this. And I think I'm gonna go with, I think I'm gonna go with a thin layer of, yeah, I'm not liking the smoky slate. How about the garden green? I just want a tiny little edge. Okay, that I like. So I need to, this is four and a half by three and a quarter. So I'm going to go three and three eighths by four and five eighths. Okay, just an eighth inch larger because I want that real narrow border. And Oh, I can't even find my stuff. Where's my glue, etc. Here it is. And then I'm going to pop this up on the card base.
Ladies, I'm glad you like it. I had fun working with these colors. I'm gonna put this right in the center. And then I'm gonna put my banner across here. And I'm just gonna use a couple of mini glue dots to stick this on. You could also use multi-purpose glue. I'm basically centering it along the bottom section of the card. So what do you think? Thoughts? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Nice, lovely card that's pretty. Okay. Um, the other thing is we can add a little bit of embellishment. I don't think it needs much, but we'll just add a little something to it. Hmm. That's a possibility. Um, I want something kind of flat. Those clear ones might not be bad. Pearls always are a good choice. I think I'm gonna go with, oh, that's kind of pretty, but that might take away from the flowers. I want something just kind of plain so that it's not taking away from uh, the flowers themselves. So I think I'm gonna use this. These are the classic matte dots. And I'm just going to put one small one, a white one. This comes with in four colors. So just a small one on each end of the banner. And that is the finished card. Oh, yes, Lori, brushed, br brushed brass butterflies would have been awesome. In fact, I'm, you know, I think I'm out of those, to be honest. Probably because I use them so much. But one little butterfly in the bouquet here would be so cute. Yep, I'm out of them. So I'll put that on my my list, okay? But that is a great choice. All right, what do you think of the no-line watercolor technique? Is this something you will try? Now, some of you may be wondering, do you have to use the watercolor paper? And if you're not using the watercolor paper, at the very least, use um, the thick white or thick vanilla paper. But honestly, I would always choose to use the watercolor paper. Um, you know, it's just, it's just exactly what you need for this. And it absorbs the water and the ink in a way um, that doesn't happen on the others. Also on the regular cardstock, sometimes if you're coloring um, with water, it'll start pilling and you don't want that. This is a nice smooth finish, okay? So I would highly suggest the watercolor paper and of course um, our water painters make this technique super simple. So um, consider adding these to your shopping list if you don't already own them because you can do some great things with these. Um, in the last Facebook Live, let me see, I think I have it right here. Um, oops, no, it wasn't that one. Um, so maybe it's already on the blog. In a recent Facebook Live, I um, used the wide tipped water painter to do a watercolor wash background, okay? 
So it was really, um, it's really awesome. So you can see that on stampinpeace.com. Lori, you gonna, you're gonna buy these as a set of three and you'll get one of each different tip. The wide, the medium, and then the small one that I was using today. And of course, the featured stamp set is full of love. So if you would like to win this card made in today's Facebook Live, please type in the comments, full of love, full of love. This is from our annual catalog. Now, here's another color or another watercolor, no line, no line watercoloring card um, I made earlier and just finished it off with some layers um, with the deckled uh, rectangle dies. And really, this can be for any occasion, right? I'm going to add a sentiment later when I'm ready to use it. Now, here's um, some of the same technique using the other large image in this set. So I'll have to finish off this card. I haven't decided how I'm finishing that off, um, but you can see those on my blog coming up real soon. Yes, I love the deckled edges too. Does everybody know what that is? It's this, deckled rectangle dies. Yes, deckled rectangle dies, and you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, all rectangles, but it just cuts out this fun edge, almost like a torn paper edge. And you can layer them, you can nest them. It's just super awesome. So I will be adding these things to my blog. One thing I want to mention, I am still having trouble with my um, video editing um, software, which is part of Apple. It's on my Mac. And I have spoken with Apple twice, and the problem just started. What happens is when I'm trying to download it to iMovie to do this editing, so I take my Facebook Live video, download it to my computer, and put it on iMovie so I can do some editing. So if you watch videos on my blog or on my YouTube, I've cut out some of the, you know, um, maybe some of the chatter at the beginning or when I'm moving the camera to a different position, I take out that little bit of video replay. Um, but anyways, the problem started, I it wasn't working the sound in the editing um, software. Spoken to Apple twice, and after many tries and doing everything possible that they could think of, they believe that the problem is because Facebook changed their, they called it encoding um, or coding, something like that. Um, so the way I was doing this all these years isn't working right now and I still can't. And they gave me a workaround where I split the, how do I say, where I take just the sound in just the video and you kind of mesh them together. The only problem is that works and I can share it, but it won't load to YouTube that way. So this video might go up on um, my uh, blog and YouTube channel without any edits, which is not the way I prefer, but um, looks like that's the best solution until I either buy a program to do the video editing, um, which I may end up having to do. Um, but also, coming in the next few weeks, I hope by the end of August, I will be doing um, my lives from YouTube, my YouTube channel and streaming to Facebook at the same time. And I have a wonderful demonstrator friend, Susan, who's going to be um, helping me with that and teaching me how to do all that and the ins and outs. Um, and that way um, I can be in two places at once, my YouTube channel and 
right here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave, and it will save the video to my computer. I don't have to do anything special. It will automatically save it to my computer, and that will be very helpful. So I'm excited about that. I'm also very nervous because, as you know, technology and I are not always friends, but I'm learning, I'm growing, and I'm doing my best. So I am excited about that change um, that will hopefully be in place by the end of this month, if not sooner. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I hope that you will give this no-line watercoloring technique a try. Uh, and um, I'd love to see what you do with it. So please share here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe. Have a good evening, and I will be back for another Facebook Live tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. See you then.